On the subject of the structure of the universe, the most popular theory today is string theory. The basic idea of string theory, is that the universe is fundamentally built of tiny strings, which vibrate at a different frequency, and in this appear as different subatomic particles. The problem arises, when you ask the uncomfortable question, what are the strings made of? The answer, that you would most likely hear, is that the strings are made of energy, which to a person who doesn't know much about physics, sounds completely plausible. The universe is built of energy. However, you can come to the realization, that this is a completely illogical statement, once you understand that the definition of energy, is the amount of work, that a force can produce for a certain period of time. The amount of work is not something which can build up the universe. Energy, although it is obviously a part of the physical world, is not in itself physical, as are for example, space, time, and matter. Energy exists only in an equation on a piece of paper. It's like information, information exists, but not physically. The universe contains energy, but it is not built of it. In philosophy there is the following idea, you can say that the universe is built of strings, or atoms, or whatever, but I can always ask the question, well, what are those made of? And this, in a way creates a paradox. So from this, we come to the conclusion, that if there really is a logical working answer to the question, what is the universe made of, the answer must be such that you cannot ask the follow-up question, what is it made of? It must be something different from everything else, which is in itself indivisible. It is a widely known fact in the physics world, that when you break an atom, what pops out are a whole lot of subatomic particles, and when you break those up, in the end everything breaks down to a wave. So the atom is made of waves. As a matter of fact, light is also a wave, and so is gravity. So what is, a wave? A wave, is a region in a medium which is curved, that is, there are regions of high and low density in that medium, and that curvature has a direction of emanation. Okay. So the only question left to answer, is what is the medium in which all these waves propagate. I would suggest that there is only one such medium. Einstein defined it as space-time. Gravity is a wave in space-time, light is a wave in space-time, and matter is a compressed form of space-time. This answer also solves our philosophical paradox, you cannot ask the question, what is space-time made of? It is an illogical question. So you might be wondering, how can space and time build up something as solid as matter? Here is how. The waves, that build up the atom, all form a geometrical structure. The energy of the waves, is contained in that structure. It is the geometry, that causes the region of curved space-time, which is the atom, to behave, as if it is a separate part from the rest of space-time. Imagine it like this. When you look at a tornado, it looks as an independent structure, but it's actually just curved air. It is the energy locked in the geometry, which makes it appear as separate from the rest. Light can reflect off matter, because light itself, is a wave in space-time. So how does gravity, come as a result of space-time curvature? Einstein proved, that the presence of matter, curves space-time around it. The simple reason for that, is that matter is made of space-time, and obviously, space-time cannot go through itself, so it has to curve around. As we also know, matter causes gravity. A popular, and completely unproven myth that is perpetuated, is that the space-time curvature, is actually caused by the gravity of matter. In reality, it is the exact opposite, the space-time curvature, is the cause of gravity, as space-time curves around matter, it is being stretched. Stretching means that there is less of it in a given region. Or in other words, matter causes a field of low-density space-time around it, where the density is lowest on the surface of matter, and gradually increases to its normal density as you go further out. If any matter is in that field of curvature, it will experience a force of displacement, caused by the density differential, and will fall towards the region of lowest density. 
gravity is a displacement force, caused by the density differential in space-time. There is a brilliant physicist, named Nassim Haramein, who recently published a paper, proving mathematically how the strong force, is caused by many black holes, in between the protons of an atom. And the many black holes, cause it via gravity. So the strong force, is an effect of gravity. From all these things, it becomes obvious, that the fundamental building blocks of the universe, is space and time. Nothing else physically exists, other than space and time. And that, is as far as physics can take you. However, it is not the ultimate answer. The ultimate answer, can only be realized, through philosophy. Scientists say, that consciousness, originates from the brain. But the brain, is built of atoms, and the atoms of space-time. Can space-time really create consciousness? When you sleep, and dream, in your dream, you can move in certain directions, so there is space. And in your dream, things don't happen all at once, but in succession, so there is also time. But your dream, is a product of your consciousness, so obviously your consciousness, has the ability to create a world, based on space and time, which is so real, that while you are in it, you think it is reality. If that's so, then why should we think, that the world in which we live in, is any different? At first glance, the world is around you, and you are in it, but in reality, it only exists, in your consciousness. It is what you experience in your senses, and nothing beyond that. Consciousness, generates the physical world, and causes it into existence, simply by observing it. In quantum physics, an atom is both nowhere, and everywhere. It is in an undetermined state. When a scientist, with his consciousness, makes an observation, and a measurement, this, causes the atom to transform, from its undetermined state, to a state of complete determination, the atom has a specific position, mass, speed, and direction of motion. The world beyond your perception, is both everything and nothing, it is pure potential. It generates itself, based on probability, and it generates itself, in the simplest functioning order. Its functionality, is determined, by whether there can exist in it, a nerve system, through which consciousness, can experience it. A nerve system, cannot exist in a one or two dimensional world, therefore consciousness, cannot enter such a world, and cause it to exist. Everything, that is experienced through the senses, can be broken down mathematically, to certain determined quantities. These quantities, are expressed, on the scales of quantification, which are space and time. The experienced world, is quantified. The unquantifiable, the infinite, is inexperienceable. Consciousness, at its source, in the state beyond space and time, is unquantifiable, and infinite. Birthless, and unchanging. It is, fundamentally indivisible. Its division, in the physical world, is only informational. And this division, is part of the illusion, of the physical world. Without the illusion, of space, and time, there is nothing to experience. So existence, in this state, is indistinguishable, from non-existence. Consciousness, gains its ability, to experience existence, through the illusion of the physical. So in a way, the illusion causes consciousness, and consciousness causes the illusion. The universe, is a causality loop. This, is the ultimate answer.